let's move on to the vesicular retinal anastomosis. This is our fourth uh, yeah. part of the procedure. I repeat, yeah. I repeat that I am going by a retrograde way after the Santorini ligature is the first step of my operation, my procedure, not the last as uh, with laparoscopic on robot. As you can see, you see the urethra, and I can open it on the, on the catheter, and I use for the anastomosis, I put my stitches immediately. I use a double needle stitches of PDS 3O. Next one. As you see, this is the right. And because I have a double needle, I can go by the best way from inside to outside, and if necessary, from outside to inside, because I'm sure to do with the other needle uh, the best way when I will be uh, in the blood and neck. Next one, I do the same thing. The three uh, anterior stitches are put, and after I can uh, re retract the catheter and cut it. Next one. And as you can see, you see the uh, urethral, posterior urethral wall, I cut the catheter. Next one. And this is the uh, posterior wall of the urethra, and I put my uh, stitches immediately, three, three uh, stitches. Next one. Using a double needle also and uh, putting the 60 st uh, stitches. We can see the uh, posterior wall very uh, clearly. Next one. And after I cut the urethra and remove the prostate with an anatomic wall way. Uh, previous one, please, uh, Vito. Uh, this is a blood anna conservation. You can see with the blue uh, indigo carmine, uh, in, uh, you can see the meatus and the bladder and the conservation. It was a tumor from the lateral, uh, lateral uh, part of the prostate. First, I put my three posterior uh, stitches using the other needle, and I can go by outside to inside. Next one. I put the three posterior, and after I, I introduce the catheter, and I can uh, put the three anterior stitches for the, uh, in the bladder neck uh, part. Next one. And after, I can have only to uh, pull uh, down my uh, catheter and, put, and uh, have a ligature with uh, the six uh, stitches, uh, which is uh, completely, I tested it's a, a dry, there is no leakage, and I, uh, I am sure that uh, secretization will be good and um, I think this is the last one. Next one, there is. Oh, I think you are the last one. This is my uh, anastomosis. It's uh, my manner to do using a double uh, needle uh, PDS 30 and, and I am sure that at the beginning of the procedure, I have my urethra, and it shows that I have not to look for it uh, at the end of the procedure, which will be more, more, dif more difficult. More time. Thank you. Definitely, your procedure is shorter than a robotic one. Yeah, I usually it's the one hour and a half, one and 45 minutes, it depends. Okay, thank you very much. Now is the turn of laparoscopy, Shin. Yes, uh, before an anastomosing uh, things, uh, we need to understand the uh, sphincteric system. Uh, you see here uh, uh, the rhabdo or myosphincter uh, in brown and uh, in Another uh, component is the smooth muscle layers, uh, that outer uh, circular muscles plus longitudinal inner muscles. So uh, there are three components of a uh, in the sphincteric system. So uh, we got to understand this uh, very correctly. Next one, please. Well, uh, when do we do uh, laparoscopic surgery, I uh, usually use a uh, uh, right lower port uh, of the ab abdomen uh, as in a camera port, camera pl placement port. Uh, uh, press uh, one, please. Another one. Another one. So this is uh, the uh, camera placement uh, I usually use. Next one, please. So uh, the result is here. Uh, you will see the uh, better uh, much and a bit more beautiful view of the junction. 
and uh, I'm I, I'm amputating uh, the junction right on uh, the junction uh, to maximize uh, this uh, procedure itself uh, allows uh, allows me to maximize the functional length of the urethral urethra and minimize the uh, risk. Uh, of uh, a surgical margin at the level of apex, uh, and actually this is the procedure I use, uh, used uh, five six years ago. And uh, by placing uh, the camera uh, from a different port uh, rather than a belly button, uh, we can see the junction very clearly, as you see. Uh, Let's move on to the next one. Next one, please. Uh, press one more, please. And uh, press another bo button, please. Well, that's the procedure I did. Uh, and uh, another one, please. And uh, nowadays, I try to preserve interprostatic portion of the uterus sphincter. Uh, uh, next one, please. Another one, please. Well, uh, another case here, uh, you're, uh, what uh, you see here is uh, I'm dissecting the circular part of the uh, inner muscle uh, sphincteric layer, uh, smooth muscle layers at the level of the junction and gently revealing, developing the plane uh, uh, to reveal the longitudinal muscle, uh, sphincteric uh, smooth muscle layer and gently elongating it uh, toward to, uh, uh, well, uh, revealing uh, the intra-prosthetic uh, part of the uh, smooth muscle. Well, uh, wait, wait a bit, bit, please. Oh, it moves on. Well, uh, you know, uh, uh, the result is here. And you see the urethral stamp uh, here, uh, uh, like a uh, pencil tip uh, shaped. And you see the longitudinal uh, uh, portion of the longitudinal uh, smooth muscle very clearly, and that makes it much easier for us to smooth. Since how many years are you using this modification? Well, uh, for the last uh, three, four years. Did you see any? Maybe it's too early to see events. Yes, because I think so. we we know the three percent of. Uh, biochemical recurrence are after 10 years. And our explanation, but I think also other colleagues, is that uh, uh, at the apex of the prostate, there are some prostatic cells which are out of the capsule and they follow the urethra. So I wonder if by using, by do, using this technique and uh, sparing some urethra just inside the apex of the prostate, you don't expose yourself but maybe you have to wait 10 years. <laughs> well, I really understand what you're concerned, but you know, by uh, using this technique, uh, uh, we could uh, lessen uh, the instance of uh, positive surgical margin at the level of apex uh, by, uh, well, uh, 15 to 5%, less than 5%. And uh, I really do not see a witness any increase in the bio, uh, bio, bio, biochemical failure by doing this. Yeah, I understand. You know, I'm speaking about late recurrences. Yes, yes, yes. Well, uh, this is uh, this clip may, may be redundant since I was asked to uh, uh, illustrate the uh, uh, way I do uh, anastomosis. Uh, this is a part of the posterior uh, so-called posterior reconstruction, and I uh, bite, I catch uh, the median raphe, uh, just one bite, and to. Uh, uh, and uh, to the level or uh, you see the bladder opening and you see the circular muscle well preserved at the uh, bladder neck opening. Yeah. So this is what I, do, uh, what I do. Well, that's it. Well, th that's the end of my talk. Yeah, there is one more. Uh... Yes, uh, we can sk skip it. Uh, Okay. We're running out of time. Yeah. yeah. Let's move to uh, Claude Abou. Please, Claude. Yes. So there is a 
to, for me, there is several ways for doing this. And as to most, it's, it's important, I think, the, the posterior reconstruction is something very important to, to have a, a, a strong layer, a strong posterior layer. The, the results of an, uh, the anastomosis is mainly due to the posterior anastomosis. If you, if you have a good layer, a good posterior layer, a strong posterior layer, you are safe. The patient will be okay. You will not have any leakage and no complication. The, the worst complication is the stricture, the uh, bladder neck con contraction. So we have to avoid that. And for that, the, uh, the anastomosis has to be perfect and uh, stable and without any leakage. So posterior layer, and then we finish by anterior suspension. And after that, there is two ways for doing the uh, anastomosis between the urethra and the bladder neck. One is uh, uh, the Voltovel technique, which is uh, you make your anastomosis distantly and then you push the bladder neck. And the other one is to approximate immediately the bladder neck and make the anastomosis in this condition. You can see in this patient the two bundles, uh, very well done. And, uh, and you can see the, the posterior layer taking the posterior aspect of the bladder neck and posterior aspect of the, of the, of the urethra. And we use the v -lock. I think the v -lock helps a lot. So uh, barbed suture, I use the v -lock, but there is other suture. Uh, can be used. And then in this patient, so we approximate immediately the, the bladder neck to the urethra, and then it will be stable, and then you can continue in on one side and, and then in the other side. So you see that the, it's always that, that even in obese patient, we are in good condition for making this anastomosis. We just have to push the, the optic and we will be. Uh, in good, uh, with a good uh, exposure and good vision. How so, many passages you do? Uh, uh, I can tell you, if you do only two passages, you, you have a stricture. If you do four passages, less stricture. You have to do many, many pa passages. I think I, di I am doing usually around 10 passages. It's small stitches and uh, allowing to don't have any stricture. And after that, the, the, the bladder catheter has to be uh, to, to, to pass inside the bladder without any problems. It has to pass directly. If you have any problem for passing the, your bladder catheter, that means that you have a hole. So the bladder catheter has to you pass very, very easily. And so for okay. me, if, if, if there is a problem with the bladder catheter, if he, if, he, uh, if he fall, for example, it's not a problem for me because uh, I'm sure that I have done a good, uh, a good anastomosis. Yeah. We, we keep going because we would like to save some time for questions. I'm sure that there will be. Uh, I do more or less the same thing, but uh, I use the uh, Patel technique. I, I use the quill uh, tread, which is barbed too, but more delicate than MV lock. And I do two throws between the, if this is a case of um, uh, extra fascial, so I don't have the denon vie fascia, but I uh, do connect the uh, distal uh, stump of the denon vie fascia to the posterior face of the uh, bladder. And so the advantage is, yes, to connect all the structures in the pelvis, but also to bring the bladder down. Uh, more or less the same thing that Claude was showing you. So we do two passages uh, on the left side, and then we do uh, two passages on the right side. Uh, avoiding the mucosa, and this uh, produces that uh, the two structures are very near and it's very easy to do the uh, anastomosis then. And then uh, we do another layer between the lumen of the uh, urethra and the lumen of the uh, bladder neck, which most of the time is saved when it's possible. And you see by pulling this thread and pushing a little bit gently on the bladder, we bring the two structures together. And I don't want to waste time, but you understood it's the, the same technique that we all use. So I think we are true and we have a few minutes that we can uh, receive your questions. Jack, if you want to take care of the questions and to moderate, 
Sure. Is there any questions from the floor? Hi, Kobe. Please. I start with the first step. It's the, it's the Santorini, Santorini plexus uh, control. Claude, are you taking, are you suturing the Santorini plexus? Yes, of course. We, the, the Santorini plexus can bleed if you cut it, if, if you cut it, if you divide it too close to the, to the pubis bone, you have bleeding. So we have to take it uh, close but to the But there are situations that you are not, you're not taking, you're not suturing the, the yes, Santorini. Yes, I suture. I, I, when, when I have divided completely the Santorini uh, plexus, I, I make a running suture on it and uh, it will be okay. In each case? In each case, yeah. Ah, okay. Maybe not 100%, but if, if I have no bleeding at all, I do it at the end. At, uh, at the end of anastomosis, I use the same stitch. Because it but seems that as you gain experience with this operation, there is no need to take the Santorini plexus. Well, I, do, I use both techniques. I just wanted to show something different, but there is not really much difference. You might lose a little bit of blood, but uh, if you, have a, you raise the pressure, I think it's nicer if you want to do a good nerve sparing because you don't... Uh, put together all the tissue and then you might damage the, the neurovascular bundles. I have the impression that the old technique that we use in the open surgery affects the, the urethra. I mean, by taking a, a, with large a suture, the Santorini plexus, we affect the urethra and, and continence. So I think the, now the technique that we use with the robot, we, we more delicate in, in uh, in this, man, in the, in this. I, I fully agree with you, and I can tell you, since I started to divide the Santorini fascia before suturing, my continence was completely changed. I have a patient now, quite of them, completely continent immediately. So that means that we, we can just keep all the, the, the system, the continent system, uh, normal, good condition. I, I want to share with you another experience. Uh, I do suspend the Santorini plexus of the periosteum of the pubis. And uh, for a certain number of cases, I had the idea to ask my nurse to push on the perineum so I didn't have to pull with the thread. And I had hypercontinent patients. And then finally, after two or three uh, hypercontinents or urinary retention, if you want to say, the, the use the right word, they were fully continent, but this is quite annoying that they have to put the catheter again for a few days. So I think that the, the fact that we suspend the Santorini plexus of the periosteum is an important key for continence, but has to be done very gently. I made a mistake to ask to push, and I was just dying, but the push was too strong. So I, I just pull, I release, and then I make my knot without pulling anymore. And this, I think, is the right balance. Next question, please. My, my question is to Dr. Mark. In the open uh, vesico-urethral anastomosis, do you experience cut-through of the sutures? Uh, do you experience cut-through of the sutures? And how, how, do, you, how do you ensure a tension-free anastomosis? I use, uh, I use two layers, uh, anterior and posterior. I don't, I don't, a running suture, I don't use it. Okay. I don't use it. Uh, I use step by step, anterior wall, posterior wall. And after I put my table in, pro, in procubitus and uh, I can gently move the, the bladder uh, to the urethra and not the urethra to the bladder. Thanks. Dr. Shalev. Microphone. Just, just a second. They are coming. Saving battery life. <laughs> okay. So uh, the I did the perineal approach, and it was not represented here in the panel. So just some uh, points here. Uh, first of all, in the perineal approach, of course, you don't have any meeting with the Santorini plexus, so we don't mind about it. That's why it also uh, usually doesn't bleed. 
the, uh, if you want to do a neurovascular uh, ban uh, bundle preservation, you see it very nicely emerging on both sides of the urethra, and you bluntly dissect it uh, laterally, and you take it out from the surgical field. The prostate usually is uh, actually enucleated from the bladder neck. There is a very nice uh, plane, an ast um, a vascular plane between them. And if it's difficult to separate it, it might be because of uh, uh, penetration of, the, uh, of uh, cancer, then you have to take out the, all the bladder neck. And, uh, well, that's it. I, I fully agree, and I think the perineal prostatectomy is a very nice anatomical technique. I don't know if you are aware of this technique from uh, uh, my friend Bocciardi, Aldo Bocciardi, who works in Milan. And he has uh, devised this uh, uh, robotic uh, trans Douglas approach, which is exactly the same thing that you do transperineally. And uh, the result with the robot, are, I know that the perineal is a very excellent, a very excellent result about continents. Potency is a little bit more difficult. It can be done, but the results were always equivocal. By doing this with the robot, you can have a perfect continence and perfect potency up front. We take out the catheter and the patient are continent because we do not touch the endopelvic fascia. We do not touch the pubic prostatic ligaments. We do not touch the Santorini plexus. We respect all the perisphincteric uh, uh, tissues. And this is very nice. I didn't present that because it's not my technique. I did only 25 cases, and I have to say that I'm very careful in, in the indication. I do only with a very low gleason, uh, with one or two positive biopsies, and unpalpable disease, because we really are intrafascial here. It's not exactly like the perineal, because in the perineal you have to go through the neurovascular bundle, and, uh, and uh, you, you face the neurovascular bundle here, you leave the neurovascular bundle below. It's different. The only thing, the only similarity is, uh, is uh, the dorsal vein complex, which is uh, safe. I have another question regarding uh, nerve preservation. And we saw it's not the same technique. For example, Shinagawa, you're trying to avoid completely the use of heat. But Claude, you're not afraid of heat. You used it there. And also no. the importance of traction. Yeah. When I looked at your technique, there is a lot of traction there. Uh, I wouldn't uh, say a lot of traction. We pull on the prostate, not on the neurovascular bundles. But and when by pulling on the prostate, it's the, the least we can do. We have to separate these two structures. But at least, I think everybody, we respect the neurovascular bundle at the maximum. So we, we pull on the prostate, especially in the robot with the fourth arm, you can end your prostate quite well. But I agree with you that traction is not healthy. Nothing. About uh, the, the, the heat and the electrocautery, I think uh, we have to avoid it, but uh, we can use it uh, small strikes, very small strikes. And uh, like that, I think there is no damage. I have patients without uh, consequences when you use... So sometimes you use a lot of clips and the, the clips are living and you have the bleeding. So sometimes it's, uh, it depends. Uh, some people agree fully with me and I see them with also good results. Well, uh, for my own, I, I'm sorry, I, I, I'm using uh, bi bipolar scissors, which are very safe and with also conjunction of, of cautery uh, in, in, in the prostate wall and to push as a veto the bundles uh, laterally. Well, uh, uh, that may not affect uh, substantially, but uh, what I'm, I'm trying to do is uh, to maximize the chance and avoiding the risk as possible. And traction, uh, electrocautery, uh, as you say, it is not healthy. There are questions from the panel to the other panelists. Everybody's happy. You. Jack, you want to... I think we can, we can summarize a wonderful session and uh, finish a wonderful meeting. Thank you to the organizers. I enjoyed and I'm sure all the panelists did. <laughs>